you might have thought through who from the teams will be involved, who needs to approve which part of the plan, how will the budget be developed, do we agree on costs and things like overhead, how will we each approach IRB, will students be involved, and more. Explore ways to answer these questions in your partnerships. Now consider how you might go about answering these questions. Most important are time and intention. Taking the time to sit down together to consider the details of how you will collaborate is critical for the collaboration's success. A range of project management approaches and tools exist that can support this kind of effective planning for a strong process. Things like work plans, detailed implementation plans, Gantt charts, and more can also help guide teams toward a comprehensive process. Ask your partner what tools they have and like to use to plan their work. Remember, one right way does not exist to plan for your translation collaboration. However, intentional effort early on in the relationship toward planning processes will help shepherd the partnership to a more successful result. The strong process that your partnership has created leads to the generation of a translated product. Deep collaboration with researchers, practitioners, policymakers, private sector can bring forth new ideas, best practices, new evidence, and sometimes even a tested solution to a development challenge. However, to move beyond the initial collaborators and context, it will need to be adapted for use as a product, practice, or policy. This adaptation for use results in translation products. Translation products are collaboratively planned for, designed, and adapted for use by the researcher practitioner team. USAID defines adapted for use as a research product or set of research results that has been tailored with the intent of facilitating the application of that research can include policy briefs, policy recommendations, editorials, media, infographics, and blogs, workshops and workshop presentations designed for decision makers and other non-technical audiences can also be considered a research product tailored for use. When this adaptation is complete, it will result in what we call translation products. The most effective translation products are not added on at the end of a collaboration. Instead, they're conceived of early on and deeply connected with the target audience believed to be key to practice or policy change. Too often, people define translation of research as a two-page policy brief. While policy briefs are useful, many other vehicles exist to translate research into practice, such as programs, conference presentations, trainings, operating manuals, videos, guidebooks, and business plans. Key to an effective product is the connection between the targeted change and a target audience to affect that change. Remember, the product itself is a very small part of the process. You must find ways to use it. The most effective translation products are not added at the end of collaboration, but planned for from the very beginning and well connected to target audience. Here are some successful examples of research translation. Note the different varieties of approaches and products, and that sometimes research translation results in multiple products. You can visit our website at laserpulse.org to learn more about these examples. As we've mentioned, the most effective translation products are not added at the end, but conceived early on and deeply connected with a target audience or audiences. The traditional research package and published strategy is not enough to impact development, and neither is creating a product without a target in mind. You must communicate the right message with the right audience at the right time to have a greater research impact. Ideally, the people that will be targeted will have been involved from the very beginning. 
However, that may not always be possible. The target user audience could also evolve and grow over time. When thinking about the kind of translation product that will be most helpful in translating the research outcome into a real-world application, it's important to think about the target audience. The target audience is the group that you target your product toward. Who stands to benefit? Who has an interest in it? Who is an agent of change? And who has the capacity to influence policy? We're now going to look at a short scenario to think about how the results of a researcher-practitioner collaboration might be translated into policy or practice. Let's consider our previous scenario. An NGO and research institution were working together on a project to research effective ways to support early grade learning in conflict areas. At this point, the teams have established their partnership and have done some extensive planning on how they will work together. Now imagine that as a result of their work, they have discovered that the inclusion of school counseling support programming had a significant impact on learning outcomes and that a particular counseling support curriculum was especially effective. Now consider, who might have a particular interest in or benefit from this finding? And what kind of translation product would be most effective for this target group?